you uh, earlier. Let me just go check here. Um, doo -doo -doo. There we go. Uh, participant resources, lecture slides. Um, uh, no, I, I, I guess I haven't. I will do so um, shortly. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to talk about hybrid modeling. And this is going to be a hands-on sort of thing. We're going to go through several types of hybrid modeling um, that I believe are extremely useful in the health context, okay? Um, and for each of them, I will show you, or for at least for most of them, I will show you a, a model here. So um, I'm just uh, saving this away, and I'll go post this uh, uh, here to the site. Um, okay. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, a um, few comments uh, about motivations for hybrid modeling. Um, uh, so, uh, any logic, as you appreciate, uh, supports multiple types of modeling. In fact, uh, three major sorts of modeling. Um, system dynamics, agent-based modeling. Uh, the, the file is there for anyone who wants to grab it. It's called hands-on hybrid modeling. Um, System dynamics, agent-based modeling, and uh, uh, and discrete event modeling. Um, the the me the methodologies being discussed there are highly complementary, and um, people often got caught up get caught up in what you can do with each methodology. The fact is that these methodologies have a tremendous amount in common, and, and from my perspective, they have more in common than they do in terms of differences. Um, and while people get caught up in the details of, of them and, and the trade-offs involving it, and I've contributed to that literature as well, um, perhaps they seek most fun or they differ most fundamentally in, in uh, the types of questions they typically try to answer. The communities tend to be focused on somewhat different um, somewhat different goals. Um, system dynamics, trying to change mental models and think about the situation. Agent-based modeling, often trying to get a, a very um, uh, good understanding of how emergent factors related to agent in interactions end up affecting high-level effects, and um, sometimes in the form of micro-simulation modeling, particularly trying to get an understanding of particularly detailed policy outcomes. Um, and uh, with discrete event modeling, you're often interested in how resource placement and availability affect service completion measures like uh, throughput, uh, waiting times, uh, waiting lists, lengths, etc. Um, now some significant synergies can be can be secured by combining these. Um, uh, there's a few motivations for hybrid modeling. One of them is that is one of comparative advantage. Um, sometimes there's certain that it's easier to replicate. Um, so if you have resource limited workflows in your model for clinics, um, that's a shoe-in for, for doing with, um, with discrete event modeling. Um, if you have lots of rich agent-agent interaction and networks that you need to capture or spatial location, agent-based modeling is very attractive. If you're dealing with continuous quantities, um, if you're dealing with uh, flows of, of resources that are continuous in character, system dynamics is, is, is very attractive. If you're dealing with regulatory Feedback system dynamics can offer a lot there, but um, uh, often there's other needs that motivate this sort of modeling as well. Um, different types of, of analysis or research questions about different areas, um, but it's really this issue of adaptivity. The fact that we can change the boundaries of what's captured in one approach versus what's captured in another as we learn from the modeling. That's some of the most the greatest advantage there. If we had to decide up front which part we're going to do in each of the three methodologies, the benefits of hybrid modeling would be still considerable, but less, because we have to fix ourselves with that. With, with a tool like any logic, we can change the boundary. We can decide, oh, the model's really sensitive to this area of the model, so we're going to represent it at an individual level. Or, you know, this other area of the model doesn't seem to be as central to our interests anymore. We're going to aggregate up to a system dynamics high level characterization of it. Um, Jeff talks a lot about stakeholder resonance, the importance for understanding what resonates with stakeholders. Um, 
clinicians appreciating individual level phenomena. Demographers have seen loving high level sort of system dynamics type characterizations. Um, stakeholders uh, will often differ what they, what they find uh, appealing and being able to mix and match different areas of the model, being able to speak to the requisite stakeholders is helpful. Turns out there's real differences in computational efficiency. Um, an aggregate high level model can be dramatically faster than the corresponding agent based model and the capacity to do multi-scale modeling. Modeling which at an individual level may be used as one, and then at the level of the neighborhood or city brings in other types of modeling, perhaps system dynamics to characterize policy dynamics um, can be very effective. Now, this lecture though is not fundamentally about the concepts of hybrid modeling and why it's good or bad or, and so on. It's, I want to expose you to five types of hybrid modeling that in the health specific area I think have really great potential. Um, and they're listed here. One of them, several of them we've already seen. Service population interaction. We saw that. Interaction between a catchment uh, of people who are depicted at an individual level um, and a clinic, which is depicted in discrete event modeling. The catchment of people is depicted with agent-based modeling. And people present for care at the service, right? We saw that. Do you remember that? Yep with the, the hybrid clinic model, and people got sick, they were in networks, and then they went for care to the clinic, and how quickly they could be seen by the clinic was a function of its capacity. And indeed, if we had expanded it, what fraction of bulk, for example, could be kept track of? We could, we could examine how does, well, I'll, I'll go into this more. Um, uh, another one is uh, an at-risk population in the context of a broader popula aggregate population. The idea here is that we use individual based modeling for a, a population of focal interest, of central interest, and aggregate modeling is used for most of the rest of the population. Maybe 80% of the population is at an aggregate level and 20% those with prediabetes or diabetes are represented at individual level. Okay, so we use the individual level characterization, the great detail um, for, for the population that where we're really interested in an aggregate otherwise. Um, uh, agents driving aggregate system dynamics. We saw this yesterday where we had um, an agent-based population driving quality of life qualities, right? Accumulated costs. Um, and then aggregate system dynamics driving uh, agent-based modeling where we might have um, system dynamics at the higher level and it's affecting the individuals. Um, so this is this hybrid ABM discrete event modeling. Here, you know, we have this population they present for care in the clinic, right? We saw that yesterday. I'm not going to go into that in much detail. We have published papers on it. Um, it's, it's really beneficial. We can, we can see if we invest in this improvement to service delivery, how will it affect population health? How will it improve population health? And we can ask, how will investments in population health, say in prevention interventions, how would those ripple through to affect our clinical delivery? How might they, for example, allow us to prioritize our clinical delivery mechanisms on patients who are really most needy, but you know, eliminate a large part of the, the, um, the demand uh, through preventive measures for those who are in a less serious situation? In short, we can ask coupled questions about the service in population health and see benefits accrue on both sides from interventions. And indeed, there are times where there's feedbacks between them that are very serious feedbacks where, you know, the, there's an infectious disease spreading and the longer the people spend waiting for, you know, treatment at the clinic, um, that's more time they can spread the bug and you can get these feedbacks between them so an investment in one can end up really impacting uh, benefiting both both spheres. Okay, um, so ladies and gentlemen, um, you know we might here have people presenting for care in this clinic. We have a very simple representation of the clinic, including leaving without being seen, and and then uh, by investments in the clinic, we lower the amount of of leaving without being seen, which means that more people are successfully treated, which lowers the the, the prevalence in the population, which um, 
which aids in further reducing the, uh, the intake of the clinic. Um, so we've seen that, service population interaction. This next one we haven't seen, and I would like to build this together to demystify it. May I do that? Yeah? Okay. Um, I term this, with a nod to my colleague Sandro Galea at um, Boston University, the budding model. He actually wasn't using it in this context, but um, he was describing another model that they had where, where um, they had a representation of, of birth, but without pairing. And he called it budding. And I rather like that term. Okay, so we're going to go into any logic, and we are going to create, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, a hybrid model that involves budding, okay? Uh, budding in the sense that we have uh, individuals who will be, um, he'll be uh, turning into, into agents once they reach a certain point in the risk continuum. May we do this? Okay, great. So go to any logic, and this, won't, this will probably take about 20 to 25 minutes. I'd like you to do file, new, model, um, and you can call it hybrid budding, and I will call it Sydney 5, 2000, 5 under bar 2006, uh, 2016 rather. Um, okay, and um, this is going to be time units of years, okay? And I'm going to put it as I am want in the location for the boot camp, okay? Boot camps. Um, this is going to be Sydney. Um, here we go. Years. Great. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, now what I'd like you to do is to um, go create a uh, three stock model. A three stock model, ladies and gentlemen, in Maine. Okay? So we're going to go to Palette and we're going to drag in three stocks with flows between them. Wherein do those stocks live? In the deed, in system dynamics. Indeed. Um, okay, and the three stocks will be normal glycemic. Okay. Um, I'd like to add in one that's called pre-diabetic. And I'd like to add in one that's called diabetic. Now I do this partly with an uh, ulterior motive in mind. I'm going to teach you just a wee bit about some system dynamics elements that I couldn't fit otherwise. Now, uh, as is often the case, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, any logic support for system dynamics, building up system dynamics diagrams and its aesthetics leave something to be desired. But if you drag this in here, you will find as one component of it, while it can connect one end of the flow it often misses the next. I'm going to call this becoming pre-diabetic. And now we're, we're dealing with a somewhat ugly mess. But you can drag this stock over so it lands atop that, um, that flow. Let me do that again. Ladies and gentlemen, this flow may not, this stock is not located at the right place. But if I drag it over and center it on that little dot, then I will connect it. And I can undertake a similar thing for this. This will be, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that's another illustration of its imperfections. Becoming diabetic, boom. And then we're going to have to drag this over and, and place it there, okay? And if you click on the flows, you can move things around and prettify it, okay? Great. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, um, okay, so next I would like to create two parameters. System dynamics in any logic, ladies and gentlemen, uses a lot of these standard mechanisms you've been learning about through this boot camp. It's not an entirely different world. This parameter is going to be called, um, uh, is going to be called, um, uh, uh, pre-diabetes pre-diabetes incidence rate okay and what sort of parameter will it be 
a rate parameter. Man, you folks are good. And the unit will be per year, and I'm going to make it 1% per year, okay? 1% per year, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm going to hitch that up to this flow. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that in system dynamics, we have these stocks that represent accumulations. They represent the state of the system at the current point in time. If we were to freeze the system, we could ask how many people are, are currently diabetic? How many people are currently pre-diabetic? How many people are currently normal glycemic? They represent the state of the system. But we give them a, an initial value, and after that, why do they change? What drives them? What drives those stocks? What makes them go up or down? It's the, begins with an F. It's the flows, thank you. It's the flows. If the net flow, the net flow is positive into a stock, for example, if becoming pre-diabetic, the rate of that flow, you know, 100 people per month coming in, and if you only have 50 people per month going out, what, how will that stock change? It will tend to rise. It's like you have water coming into your bathtub faster than it's going out. And, and conversely, if the outflow is greater than the inflow, it will tend to decline. Okay? So just, just a, a recollection there. We're going to set, therefore, we don't set formulae for the stocks. How did you create that link? Um, I, I dragged it in from the system dynamics palette, like that. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, in short, we do not provide formulae for stocks. We provide formulae for flows, ladies and gentlemen. Formulae for flows. The flows then drive the stocks, okay? We provide initial values for stocks, but thenceforth, I should say henceforth, I think. Um, they're driven by the flows, okay? So we need to provide formulae for this, for the flows. And let's start with becoming pre-diabetic. Ladies and gentlemen, if we have an instance rate, a probability per year of becoming pr diabetic, and then we have some number of people at risk, does anyone want to say how that flow? Let's suppose we had 1,000 people at risk, and we have a 1% incidence rate. 1,000 people at risk and a 1% incidence rate, a probability of 0.01 of becoming diabetic in the course of that year. How many people on average would become diabetic during that year? 10, 10. Tracy communicated it in a, in a direct fashion. So it's 10, ladies and gentlemen. We multiply it out. Pre-diabetes incidence rate, pre -di not predicate, pre-diabetes incidence rate times normal glycemic, ladies and gentlemen. We're dealing with system dynamics with averages. We're abstracting away from the vagaries of particular events. We're abstracting away from, from, the, um, from the particularities of exactly when people happen. We're focusing on patterns. George Richardson talks about aggregate system dynamics um, as, as being about sort of at a very particular distance where we, we're, not, we're paying attention to patterns but not to particular events. Okay, so uh, here we are, pre becoming pre-diabetic. This is number of people per year who are becoming diabetic. So if we had 1,000 people at risk, and this was 0.01, a 1% chance per year, then it would be 10 people on year per average who are becoming pre-diabetic. Okay, next, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to provide another parameter that's going to be called mean time, mean time to become pre-diabetic, oh, excuse me, to become diabetic, to, ooh, oh gosh, sorry, mean time to develop diabetes amongst pre-diabetics. Oh man, you don't like that, do you? Me mean time to develop diabetes among pre-diabetics. Sorry, I have to create these names on the fly, so I, I know they're not great. Um, mean time well, at least no one can claim that they'll grossly misunderstand it. Um, okay, um, so I'm going to connect that to becoming diabetic. 
and I'm going to connect it up to pre-diabetics. Okay? So now we're going to give a formula for becoming diabetic. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen. So becoming diabetic here, if we have a mean time, the formula is actually the number of pre-diabetics divided by that mean time. Um, it's, that's because the incidence rate is, is one over that mean time. It's a reciprocal of it. So we can write it as this thing times one over the incidence rate of, of, of diabetes among pre-diabetics, or we could write as this thing over the mean time to become pre-diabetic. Um, it's, it's exponentially distributed, and it turns out that the mean is one over the um, the alpha, the the the, the time con the um, the uh, rate constant associated with it. And it's just a factoid. That's two different ways of specifying what are called first order delays. Here we have a stock, and its its outflow <coughs> depends directly on the value of the stock. The larger the value of the stock, the larger the outflow will be. It tends to be. Um, self-balancing. If there's tons of people in the stock, you'll have a half faster outflow will bring the stock down. If there's few people in the stock, the outflow will be smaller and it may allow the stock to build up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's run this model. Oh, let's set the normal glycemic people to 10,000, shall we not? 10,000 people in normal glycemic and we'll start zero for diabetic and pre-diabetic. Okay, I have to watch out getting excited because I'm going to burn my throat out. Um, so, okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, mean time. I'm sorry, I stand remiss. It was one percent for the incident rate. The mean time, ladies and gentlemen, will be um, will be uh, twelve years. Twelve. And what sort of very uh, parameter is it? Time, indeed. It's it's a time. So it's it's twelve years. Okay. There we go. Great. Okay. And you'll notice this is dimensionally consistent. You can actually ask any logic to test it. Because here we have a probability per year times people. So you get a people per year flowing down here. Um, this one is, is a uh, number of people divided by a time. So you get people per unit time flowing down here. So it's a, it's a happy camper from a unit perspective. OK, let's run it. Let's see what happens. Thank you. Man. I still got a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's click here. Click on the pre-diabetics. Okay, you should see it rising, and then you should see it sort of plateauing out. And you can see it then turn, turn around, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, and, and oh, you can also take a look at the number of normal glycemics. The normal glycemics is decreasing, and the number of diabetics, unfortunately, is rising. Okay? Now, I could hitch up charts to these and so on, but one nice feature about system dynamics is that you can go display the variables very, very, um, uh, very interactively. Okay? And in fact, you can even, um, there are data sets associated w with them that, um, that can be useful for, um, for manipulating. Anyway, um, you could also change their values. You could, for example, watch this. Um, we could run it for a while. Sorry, yes. 10,000. 10,000. Ladies and gentlemen, you can come with system dynamics uh, in, agent, in, in, in any logic. You can click on something like this, click, and then you can change it. So I could make it you know, 5,000 people start, you know, go here, and then I could, I could run it, and I could kind of see how that has changed things. Okay? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, okay, now, now we're going to create this as a hybrid model, okay? We're going to, we're going to render this as a hybrid model. Jeff, what time is the food? Okay, okay, good. We'll be able to finish it. Ladies and gentlemen, Next, I want you to, we're going to inject the hybrid components. So we're going to do something rather unusual. One might almost say heretical for a system dynamics model. Okay? 
Um, I could be excommunicated from. It has to be. <laughs> Pity for them. Um, okay, so we're going to right click on the model and we're going to choose agent type. And the agent type is going to be person, okay? Okay. Um, I've been seen consorting with agent <laughs> models. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, I've just added an agent type, new agent type person, okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, I would like you to go to person and we're going to lend that person an appearance. We're going to go down to, to our favorite place, to the pictures area, and drag in person to there. I should note, ladies and gentlemen, for your resourcefulness, that down at the bottom of the palette, there's a plus sign. Sometimes some of these palettes may disappear, and this is how you can get them added back in. If they ever go missing, you can actually add them back in. You can remove them and put them back in if you see fit. Um, so added in this person. Are we okay with that? Okay, so now we have a, um, a set of people. This is great. And now I'd like to create a population of agents, okay? Um, so we're gonna go back to Maine and now we are going to drag in person to Maine to create a population, okay? Okay, and this will be a population of agents of, of size zero, okay? Size zero, great, thank you, Alan. A population, ladies and gentlemen, of size zero initially. Nobody is starting as an agent. The agents, ladies and gentlemen, the agents will represent diabetics here, okay? Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Okay. So next, ladies and gentlemen, so we have this population of agents. Um, I would like to go to this population, keeping that in our, in our selection, I would like to scroll down to initial location, and I would like to press place them in the specified point. And the specified point, ladies and gentlemen, will be our old favorite uniform between zero and space width. Remember that? Ladies and gentlemen, you folks have mastered a lot of the basics of, of, of any logic. I mean, there's, you've really done a very large need to do to, to be productive modelers here. It's, it's sort of revisiting these things in different ways with different configurations. Um, but, you know, you've, you've scaled most of the formidable heights of, of, of any logic challenges. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, so I've just placed them in their X and Y locations associated with the population. We've done that many times in pleasant surrounds of this boot camp, and I appreciate your patience. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, just to test this and, and to, to, to give you one more exposure to user interfaces, I would like you to go add a button to main. So when we press that button, an agent will be created. How would I do that? Can anyone tell me where to start? Yeah, we're gonna go to controls. Um, and we're going to do what? Drag button into main. And the button here will be called um, uh, add person button. This is just going to be to try it out. I just want to make sure that things are hunky-dory, okay, in your models. This is not, not in any way uh, uh, needed for the hybrid model per se, okay? And the button will be add person, okay? What will the action for the button be? Can anyone remind me? How do we add a person into the population? Okay, it's actually this dot add underbar population. Just about add it dot, but it's add underbar. Now, if those people had parameters, we'd need to put those between the, um, the uh, parentheses there. 
but they don't. Okay, let's run the model, ladies and gentlemen. Build early, build often, and the TAs sit ready. Can I ask a question? Can, can. Um, you can add population, can you kill them? Can. Remove underbar population. Okay. Aw. Aw. Um, okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, when you add the button, you should see people come in. Do you see that? Okay. Oh, oops. Okay. So I'm just probing the button and, and folks are coming in. Kurt, I think you'd agree that's a proper use of frob. I guess. Yeah. I don't know if I would agree, though. It's not English. Well, I mean, it's, it's sort of, it's kind of casual thing of it. It's, I'm not tweaking it in a close way. I'm not sure that tapping the button really deserves any one of those words because it's just like a... Okay. Maybe you could argue twiddling. Right. Anyway. Um, okay. I think it's pretty sure. <laughs> okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to we are now going to complete this, and this is where the chickens will come home to roost. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I want to draw your attention. This is a very important sort of insight into into hybrid models. There are times where we have a group in the population that we're really focused on, but in order to to capture the dynamics of that group in order to create them, in order to, for them to come into being and, and to circulate, there's a much broader group that we need to characterize at some level. But we don't want to characterize that broader group always at the level of detail we do of the subgroup, of the group of focal interest. So maybe our model is mostly about diabetics and, and you know, uh, self-care among diabetics. And, and surely we need the broader population to characterize you know, the people are coming into the diabetic population over time. But we don't need to represent all people as individuals like we might want to do for diabetics. Maybe we want to track for a diabetic that their particular schedule of care, their care-seeking behavior, how frequently they see their GP versus uh, an endocrinologist. Maybe we want to keep track for them of, of how, how um, adherent they've been in terms of taking um, you know, measuring their blood sugars and taking their insulin and so on. So maybe we want a really detailed representation of diabetics, but not of normal glycemic people, right? Why do we insist on forcing all models into the mold that we need for the most, for the most detailed? We're going to break out of that now, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, we're actually going to represent diabetics as agents, and they will become agents as they flow to here. That is the core idea. And how will we do that, ladies and gentlemen? We're going to do that by taking you where no person in this room who has signed up for this course has gone before. Okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to create an event called, oh my gosh, called uh, Create Agent Trigger. Trigger. Okay, and this trigger type will be based on something that most folks here have never done before, which will be a conditional. It'll be a conditional transition. And the tr condition, ladies and gentlemen, will be, well, under what conditions do you think someone should be created as a diabetic? Well, if there's at least one person in this diabetic stock. So we're going to say this dot diabetic Greater than, greater than or equal to 1.0. So if there's at least one person waiting in the stock, we're going to go and, and, and individuate them. We're going to render them into a full person with all the rights and privileges conferred thereupon. Okay, we're going to create them as a full person. Okay, now, so when this stock goes above one, we will create them as an agent. And this is how we'll do it. We're going to type a bit of code, okay? And it's not too long. It's going to be something like four lines long. Ready? Okay, it'll be, we're going to declare a variable that's going to be a nice name for something. Int count agent. So this int is just saying I'm going to create a variable um, that's an integer. And the variable's name is going to be count agents to be created. Okay? And we cast it, it's, we cast it, 
to an int. In other words, we render it into an int from calculating floor of of um, of uh, diabetics, a diabetic. Okay, you know I had remiss that I, I probably should have called diabetic um, diabetics to be created as agents. Will you will you allow me the privilege of doing that? Okay, that you could, you thanks. Could, Just you could say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um. Win one for the Gipper. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So this should be called diabetics to be created as agents. Okay. Okay. Diabetics to be created as agents. Um, and and the condition here is is now modified to this dot diabetics to be created as agents greater than or equal to one point zero. It would it would trouble me. Maybe even during my flight back that I had sullied your sullied you with something that was so misleading. This should be floor okay, so this code, so ladies and gentlemen, I changed this to be diabetics to be created as agents. To make it clear it's a it's a holding error. For this for this event, the condition is gonna be this dot diabetics to be created as agents is greater than or equal to, to one point zero. And for the action, it's going to be int count agents to be created equals, and this turns this, this thing here into an int, and it's floor of this. What does that floor mean? Does anyone know? Yeah, so if it's like 3.5, it'll be 3. If it's like uh, 3.14159, it'll be 3. Why do you have Isn't the definition of floor an instrument? No, it, it returns actually a. a floating point or a, or a double and returns a double oddly enough but well it's not actually deeply objectionable I kind of I kind of get it um, that maybe sometimes you want to do the floor still of a double precision value but but yeah I wish there were a floor as int or something okay ladies and gentlemen are we done with that line okay we're, we're a lot of the way done next ladies and gentlemen next we're going to say four int i equals zero. We're going to create that many agents. This loop is just going to go through and created that many agents, okay? Count agents to be created, whatever the name of that is. We're going to say i plus plus and, and basically we're going to create that many agents. So for each of those agents, we are going to add a population member. This dot add population. There we go. Boom. Now, if this were a stratified model, so we had stratified by age groups, for example, we'd be creating agents for those appropriate age groups. So this is what's adding in this many agents. And then all we have to do, what do you think we still have to do? Can anyone, could anyone um, reason about that? What do we still have to do now that we've added these ones? Well, we need to remove them from this diabetics to be created. We don't want them to stay there, say they still have to be created as agents. So we're going to say this thing equals this thing minus the count of agents to be created. So we've, we've created them. So there are 3.5 maybe waiting to be created. We create three of them and we leave 0.5 there. Maybe there's 4.67 to be created. And so we create them and there's 0.67 remaining. Yes, there is, and it's a beautiful thing. And I thank you so much for liberating me to show it to you. It's minus equals. And I, 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 different boot camps, I'm afraid of scaring people, and so I, I shy away from it. But this boot camp is filled with stalwart individuals. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I'm really impressed. You folks are just, are just I was going to say sucking it up, but I mean, uh, they're, they're, they're eating it up. It's great. Okay? Um, it's great. I really appreciate it. Okay, the next thing, folks, is, so this, this is a much nicer way to do it. Okay. Yes? Uh, this is, all this is done within the, the, the cycle that you created. The, the event? Which is years, right? Yeah, it's all in years. Yeah? Okay, okay. Yeah? And ladies and, oh, except, be, be clear. This event will go off within a year. 
In other words, this event will go up many times in a year if needed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Basically, when, that, when this goes above... So it's a continuous thing. It's a continuous thing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, finally, we're going to do create agent trigger dot, and this is going to restart it. So in other words, we'll start it looking again. So that's all we need to do, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we need to do. I will put this up on the big screen. And I appreciate you winning one for the Gipper. The Gipper here being Jeff. Okay. It's a, we, we actually just came up in an earlier boot camp. Win win for the Gipper comes from a, it's a heritage is decidedly American. Correct. I had to look it up, I didn't know what it was. I think Jeff first encountered it during his sojourn to America. Sorry? What is it doing? Oh, that's, that's the name of this event, Create Agent Trigger, that we created. And all it's doing is it's resaining it. Because this code is inside the event. And so this code is going off when the event condition is fulfilled. And we want to tell, you know, it's fired now. It's like a mouse trap. It's fired. And we need to reset it to get it going again. The condition is fired, it's done its job, it's caught the condition, we now go through the work that's required and then we reset it so it's ready to spring again. Okay, I'd like you to build the model. TA, stand ready for your deployments. Um, so just, just confirming for 100%, when you're looping and you're just looping across the menu, you right? Yeah, we're just, yeah. we're just those who are here to be created. We figured out how many of them there are as an integer. So maybe there's 3.46 to be created here in this stock, because stocks are continuous. Yep. And so we figure out, okay, there's three full agents to be created. And then we loop, for each of those three, we add a person into the population. And then we subtract, there's 3.46 in the stock, we subtract from it three, so we get 0.46. And then we reset this event so it's ready to fire again when another half or so of a person comes in here. And clearly because you've done this as a loop, you can't just add it to the population the number that you would Yeah, unfortunately, and maybe with Java 8 that there would be a really slick way to do it. You know, to just say, like, do this n times in one line. But I wish there isn't. I'm yeah, really I don't, I, really nothing discovered to me like either. Yeah, I agree. Like, you can have infinite streams. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense to me why you couldn't yeah. have a... No, I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, in any case. Yeah, you can't just say add five. I wish you could. The, and one of the reasons, Joe, is that normally when you add people to a population, oh, you have to specify their individual uh, parameter values. And there aren't a toy model, but in general, we'd, we'd have some, right? You'd w be adding people of a certain age category, a certain sex, or whatever, and, um, and you might draw those randomly from the characteristics of this upstream population, or, or based on the stratification of the model. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's build the model, make sure it's a happy camper, and then, if it is, I'd like you to do run... And what shall you see? What do you see happening? A screen full of people. Yeah, and whence are those people coming? Those are people who have become diabetic. And when they reach the diabetes state, they, they turn into a full person. And so we can link them in with their social network. We can place them in a physical location in space. You know, place them in geography. We can lend them and start tracking their history of of, of care seeking, we could uh, we could track their their uh, attitudes towards um, taking their medication on time. In short, we can treat them as individuals, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, um, so you'll notice that at any one time, this number of people to be created is just barely over one. Why is that? It's at most 1.0 something. Because every time it goes over one. Yeah, every time it goes over exactly. Every time it goes over one, we create someone. And so these are the people, ladies and gentlemen, the focal point of interest. Why is this of interest? This is a tiny model like so many of those we build together. But the key point is often, ladies and gentlemen, there's this upstream population, maybe 80% of the population, 90% way up there. Maybe we're interested in the frequent flyers or the people formerly known as frequent flyers who come to our SDI clinic. 
um, you know, who are, and, and, and those are the population of greatest interest, but then there's a broader population who are of less interest. Or maybe these are, these are people, you know, 80% of the population who are not diabetics, and only a small fraction get down to you, but we're really interested in them, right? So uh, maybe, maybe these are the people with acute mental illness here, and um, these are people with at, who are at risk. Maybe at some point we'll push back the boundary of the model so even the at-risk people are captured at an individual level. The point is we have that flexibility within these models to change, to decide at what point in the risk continuum do we turn people into agents. Now Jeff, in his normal leadership style, has, has worked on a model which has taken this basic rubric and has actually had people go back to an aggregate form after a certain point. So as I recall, there's a model, Jeff, you were working on with Robin at some point, where people turn into agents for a certain point in their, in their care pathways, and then they, after going through certain care pathways, they were rendered back into agents, excuse me, back into numbers in these stocks. So they, they were represented as agents for a while, and then went back to the stocks. So don't be fooled just because this is a, a tiny, tiny model. This could be a, a rather rich system dynamics model, but it will be wicked fast. There's the cart board. Um, uh, it will be wicked fast compared to an ancient base model. And, and most of the stiff population will be simulated uh, in that rough, high level way that would probably be fit your research question. You don't need to go into all sorts of detail about that upstream population. Your interest is about this downstream population, which is captured as agents. And maybe after they leave the, the at-risk state, maybe after that person with severe mental illness is, is you know, properly cared for and, and, and is in a stable life, they go back and they're no longer captured as an agent. Very powerful type of modeling, use of hybrid modeling. It plays to the strong um, performance advantages of system dynamics. The fact that often we don't want to represent a large part of the, like the level of detail, but it allows us the, 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 the exquisite level of flexibility and precision that we can have with agent-based modeling for those populations of greatest interest. Okay, Jeff, has the moment of food ingestion arrived? It has, yes. <laughs> okay, so we're going to break for, what, 20 minutes? 15. 15. Cool. That's right, 15. Five minutes earlier. <laughs> okay, 15. And, and then we'll reconvene and we'll, we'll take a look at one or two other hybrid models. Okay? Thank you.